Hey, what's up everybody? It's Space Mike here. Last Thursday on July 5th, 2018, India's Space Research Organization, ISRO, conducted a pad abort test of a space capsule designed to carry humans into orbit. So we need to talk about this because this is a big deal. Welcome to Epic Future Space. ISRO conducted this test at their Satish Dawan Space Center on Triharakota Island. The launch abort test lifted off at 0130 Coordinated Universal Time and had seven solid rocket motors that pulled it away from the launch pad using the polar escape system instead of the pusher escape system. The prototype crew capsule separated from the abort rockets a few seconds later and then deployed its parachutes to slow down its descent into the Bay of Bengal about three kilometers from the, the shore. And it's kind of unknown whether whether or not it was uh, intended for the parachutes to jettison or be cut from the capsule just a, a few seconds before splashdown. Uh, kind of splashed down a, a bit hard. But ISRO said in a statement that the test was successful and that their recovery boats were able to get out there and recover it in a timely manner. And everything was safe with it and it was the first in a series of tests to qualify the crew escape system. They haven't said how many launch abort tests they wanted to conduct, but usually there's two tests that most companies and, and organizations will do. The pad abort test, which ITRO just completed, and then an in-flight abort test, which SpaceX is going to be conducting hopefully later this year for their Dragon spacecraft, which also hopefully will at the end of the year have its first uncrewed test flight of the Dragon V2 capsule. But in the meantime, ISRO just got a leg up on Boeing because Boeing hasn't conducted their pad abort test yet. Does that mean that there's another race on? Is there a new race on right now? Who's gonna get to orbit first? SpaceX, ISRO, or Boeing? Let me know in the comments below what you think. Probably SpaceX is what I think, but what if ISRO beats Boeing? That would be embarrassing for Boeing. <laughs> for most of you watching, you probably already know this, but for those of you who don't know, the whole reason to even do a pad abort test or an in-flight abort test is because you need the launch abort system in case there's anything going wrong with the rocket in the middle of flight. And if something does go wrong, you want to be sure that you can get your people off of that rocket as best as you can. There have been a couple of instances in the Russian program where that launch abort system came in very handy. But I feel like we need to give a little bit of backstory as to how ISRO got to this point of doing a pad abort test since officially they don't actually have a human spaceflight program. Let me explain. So ISRO has been studying human spaceflight since the early 2000s. There's some documents that go as far back as 2001, 2003, 2005. It's kind of unknown when they officially started studying human spaceflight and building their own systems in order to do so. But it wasn't until 2007 that it was official that they were actually studying the concept and had actually allocated a little bit of serious money, around 14 million US dollars, in order to study the concept and prove out some of the technologies that would be needed on the path to human spaceflight. The announcement that they were studying human spaceflight came on the heels of a successful space experiment called the Space Recovery Capsule Experiment, commonly known as SRE or SRE-1. And with this experiment, it was studying a few different technologies. SRE-1 launched into space on January 10th, 2007 from a PSLV rocket, specifically the C-7 mission. And it actually was in space for 12 days before it re-entered the atmosphere on January 22nd. The reason they did that was because SRE-1 was proving the technologies that they needed in order to recover an orbiting space capsule. So they had to test the thermal protection system, all the different guidance systems, the parachutes for it, and of course the flotation devices once it splashed down in the ocean. And it actually sat in the ocean for about two hours before they were able to recover the vehicle. But they did recover it successfully, and everything was successful with this mission. So successful that they were actually planning a follow-on experiment, SRE-2. And and that got delayed quite a bit. They were planning on launching it somewhere in the 2014, 2016 timeframe and eventually decided to cancel the mission. Just this year, they officially canceled SRE2 in January of this year, 2018. So didn't necessarily need it because they moved on and have done a few more tests since then. 
Before the pad abort test, the most important test that they had conducted for this so far was their crew module atmospheric re-entry experiment, or CARE, and this actually launched on the maiden, well, suborbital flight of the GSLV Mark III vehicle, which was a test of the first stage as well as the boosters, an in-flight test. It had a dummy upper stage to it, and so since it was just going on a suborbital flight, why not include this test of the actual full-up module? And no, it wasn't a functional module on the inside, but structurally it would be about the size that they would have their actual vehicle be. The GSLV Mark III rocket and the CARE experiment launched on December 18th, 2014, and everything with that test was also successful. Interestingly, the CARE experiment had three sets of parachutes. It had pilot parachutes, drogue parachutes, and of course, the main parachutes. And they all deployed successfully, but with the pad abort test, they've been doing some refining on the drogue parachutes. What that, uh, um, you know, changes are, I don't know, but uh, hopefully they'll be able to get to where they're happy with it. All the work that they've been doing for over a decade that has led up to the pad abort test that they did last week is all for their orbital vehicle. So let's talk about the technical specifications of that a little bit. They want it to be around 3.7 tons and it's designed to carry between two to three people into space, which actually brings me to an interesting tangent here. If they're successful in this project and send their own people into space, they would have the right to have their own name for their space travelers. And why not? Russia has cosmonauts, the United States has astronauts, and China has taikonauts. So what will India's space travelers be called? Viomonauts. They've already picked out a name, and I can't wait for the day when I can talk about Viomonauts as fact and not just something in the future. Uh, anyway, it's a little confusing as to whether it's going to send two people into space or three people into space, because all of the official ISRO documents and even the simulator that they had sent to train some of the Viomonauts, which haven't been selected yet, only has two seats inside. But all the diagrams that we can find online have three seats inside, so not sure if that's just some confusion over it being similar to a Soyuz capsule or if, you know, ISRO has had plans and has gone back and forth between it being a two-seater or a three-seater. But in any case, let's just call it their Gemini capsule. Interestingly, its service module has gone under a recent redesign, at least I think it has, because a lot of the original artwork that we saw had this service module that's actually based on the fourth stage of the PSLV rocket, modified to be the service module module for this. However, there's some new diagrams that are coming out from ISRO that show a kind of uh, in-between system that will have the energy and solar panels and probably communications equipment and stuff like that, but still has a modified fourth stage of the PSLV rocket as its service module. There has been some collaboration with Russia over the years. Some of that was just expertise so that ISRO can build docking ports for the orbital vehicle. ISRO intended to send one of their new Viomonauts on a Soyuz capsule to the International Space Station, but that plan kind of fell apart in 2010. And it would be similar to the flight of Rakesh Sharma, who was part of the Intercosmos program back in 1984, where he flew on the Soyuz T-11 mission. And I know there's a Kalpana Chawa, but she was technically an American citizen working for NASA, even though she was from India. May she rest in peace. Once their orbital vehicle is ready, the plan is to launch it from a GSLV Mark II vehicle and build a new launch pad at the Satish Dhawan Space Center that would have a crew access tower and a zip line for an emergency escape if uh, they uh, use that method. But uh, construction on that launch site has not begun. So even though they've had this successful test, India is probably still a decade away from being able to fly. At least that's my prediction. I hope I'm very wrong about that. That would be awesome if they, you know, have this capsule ready to go and do an unmanned test flight in like two, three years. That would be sweet. There is one other option for India. They've also studied space shuttles. In fact, they conducted a suborbital test of a subscale space plane called their reusable launch vehicle. And that could turn into some sort of like X-37B type program, or it could become bigger and actually be a space shuttle, a crewed space shuttle. So ISRO even had a contractor who's developed flight suits for them, pressurized flight suits. So if all of these different elements don't tell you that India is 
serious about their human spaceflight program, I don't know what will. Well, anyway, thank you very much for watching this video, and let me know what you think about this pad abort test and India's human spaceflight program in general in the comments. And be sure to watch out next week for a video that I'm going to put out on Friday talking about the top five canceled International Space Station modules that actually had hardware built for them. Be sure to like, subscribe, and if you would like to contribute to the show, you can head on over to patreon.com slash epicfuturespace and let me know what other topics you would like me to cover in the future. So thank you very much again for watching. Keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody, and don't forget, Ad Astra to the stars.